out today to march against Monsanto slash Bayer. I don't know if you know the history of Bayer, but they are uh, what I call the demon spawn of IG Farben post-Nazi Germany, World War II, when this they were is, broken up. And so there is a direct lineage in these uh, multinational corporations that have no allegiance to any nation or state, just their, their own bottom line and who they can buy. Uh, and uh, of course, Monsanto's a long tradition of that in the 20th century. Why it still exists today? It's because of us. Maybe not us here anymore, but the power of the individual is what I talk about on my radio broadcast two hours a day, six days a week. I'd say the power to heal is yours. But part of that power is in the cessation, if you will, of the inflow of the things that feed, for instance, cancer. A big part of my concern is a homeopath. People come to me, they say they have cancer. I don't need to attack and kill it with toxic chemicals that are similar to the things Monsanto creates, or Bayer, in fact. I simply help them to stop feeding the beast. When you have cancer, you can attack and kill it and hope that you survive the assault and the onslaught, or you can simply find out the food supply for cancer and stop feeding it. As you starve it, there are things that you have to do. You have to detoxify your body. And when we look at Monsanto's existence or its purchase or a combination with Bayer, we say, how is it possible that they subsist as a cancer on our planet, eating up the, the, the kids? In fact, the vaccines themselves now have been found to be contaminated with glyphosate. And this was uh, discussed by an MIT PhD researcher, Stephanie Seneff. And she talks about glyphosate even in the vaccines, yet if the vast majority of our brothers and sisters in our communities are still believing that the government and the corporations, the Monsantos of the world as well as the pharmaceutical industry, are protecting us by injecting us with glyphosate and other heavy metals, then we've lost before we've begun, or they have. Perhaps you've woken up and are aware of that. A comedian George Carlin had a great saying, those of you who remember George Carlin, he says he has a few rules that he lives by. The first rule is that he doesn't believe anything the government tells him. And you should add to that the modern, mainstream, medical, pharmaceutically conflicted media. Because when they report on Monsanto, when they report on these events, they look at us perhaps a little squirrely-eyed because they don't understand. Perhaps they have not been hit as hard as you have or others that you know with the devastating impact of glyphosate, of Roundup, of these genetically modified organisms in our food supply, which is no longer food. So we could look to the government to solve the problems that they create, but that is sort of a bit of an insane idea based on the money involved we don't have, and they do. Our representatives in government, with very few exceptions, look to the highest bidder to determine how they will vote. Our friends in the north, Canada, a country that is very against GMOs, the many people up there, yet their legislature voted just past this past week against even labeling GMOs, against the will of the people there. And this is not to say there's no opportunity, there's no hope, we can't win. In fact, we are winning, and, and Justin talks about that. We are, they are desperately trying to change their image. It won't work because the allergy rates, the cancer rates, the neurological deficit, neurological degradation rates among the people and among children keep rising. And you probably know why, even though they might admit or try to admit or try to claim that they don't know why. So our first order of business in terms of taking that individual power that we have is to stop feeding the beast. Many of you are here have already figured this out, but those of you watching around the world perhaps haven't. Stop purchasing the things that contain GMOs. Stop buying the processed foods and urge and help your fellow family members, your neighbors, your friends, your loved ones to do the same. Now, how many of you here have a garden at home? Anybody? Raise your hand if you have a garden. All right, at an event like this, I expect more than that. And it, well, by, the, by this time next year that you're here, everybody must raise their hand and have a garden. There are people here that are promoting a concept of permaculture, turning their lawns in the food forest, the front yard, the side yard, the backyard. This to me is one of the most important things that can empower you and disempower the Monsantos of the world. Disempower even our government agencies that pretend to be protecting us in the environment when in fact they're enabling the poisoning of the planet and the people on it via the money that's sent their way. 
So if I say the power to heal is yours, it's not just because you sit down and it comes to you. It's because you stand up and you take it back. Now they're going to continue to poison this planet and the people on it as long as we allow it to happen. And some of you think, well, we can just vote out the people that are for it. We've tried that many times, and I'm not against that if that's what your bliss is. But I will say the power that you have is ultimately to grow more and more of your own food, save more and more of your own seeds and share them, and convert every lawn that you see, every patch of lawn, even on the side of a road, into something that can be eaten. The less we have to go into a grocery store of any kind to buy our food, the less power they have, and the more healing you will receive and achieve not well yeah go ahead and applaud that everybody if you, especially if you have a garden and that means as a homeopath i have a lot less to do when you come to me because you're not as toxic and poisoned with glyphosate and monsanto cancer is not a random act of god it's it's an insane act of man the fact that we think we can put these toxic chemicals into the soil or into the air into the water and not have a consequence and not destroy our children and our grandchildren so if you're not gonna grow food for yourself, please grow it for them. Now I'm grateful and humbled to be here with Justin, a great warrior and uh, standing up for health, freedom, healing, liberty, and non-GMO, you know, taking this, taking this land back. But if any of you live, in, does anybody live in a gated community? Gated community? Yeah. Now, one of the things I used to do, I got out. I got out because they make it spray, right? Just imagine how many people live in gated communities. If we can reach out to those communities and they can fight back their own homeowners association and say, you know what, we've got to stop that. That would be huge. Just as a, a thought in terms of stopping the poisoning, stopping the poisoning wherever you are. If you can't move, you've got to find a way to defend and protect the land that you're on. And it is interesting to note the concept of private property. There's a lot of misinformation about this. But who has the most interest in protecting the property that you're on, if not you and those directly surrounding you? What we have seen, even in the name of in the environment, as we put more and more power over property, over where we live, into the hands of fewer and fewer people further and further away from us, we find that they sell our interests, they sell our property rights out for those moneyed interests that can basically buy them no matter how you vote, no matter what you ask and plead or demand of those government agencies, the people in them, or the elected bureaucrats that don't seem to have any power over those oligarchies on a federal level, state level, or even a local level when it comes to homeowners communities that are poisoning every piece of land in those gated communities. So my message is, what is efficient? If you're into the martial arts, you talk about getting the most out of every movement. Don't waste a movement. Listen to your heart, follow your bliss, but at the same time, observe what has happened throughout history so what you don't, in the process of a good idea, make the same mistakes in trying to manifest those ideas. A cleaner world, a cleaner planet, a cleaner neighborhood. How do we achieve that? Again, I bring you back to the concept. Do we fight, attack, and kill? We don't have the tanks, we don't have billions of dollars, we don't have a war machine necessarily behind us, or do we somehow find a way to remove the food supply for those who would enslave us and poison us. Isn't that more efficient? Isn't that ultimately nonviolent? And the only violence that is happening is within the bodies of those who no longer have the power that you're giving them to poison you, to poison me, to poison my kids. Now, I've got two kids that are organic and non-GMO. They've never been vaccinated. They've never even once had a chemotherapy drug called antibiotics. Even antibiotics are a form of chemotherapy. Don't kid yourself. We have knowledgeable healers here in this community. You can go to local health food stores, you can go to homeopaths, naturopaths, acupuncturists. They know of ways to prevent you resorting to these toxic medicines that, if not from Monsanto and Bayer, probably from someone that is, a, is just like them, doing the same thing, poisoning us in the name of helping us. Feeding the world? I don't think so. We throw away more food than they're making, even with GMOs. We have enough. The question is, do we have the ability, the will to take the food that we have extra and give it to those in need? Because it's not coming from there. It's coming from right here with you people here, with the things that Justin Harvey is doing and all of you that are activating in this way. Again, we can yell and scream and we can really get emotional and that's okay because that emotion can drive us. The anger can drive us, but let it not drive us into the violence that they are visiting on us every day through the poisoning of their GMOs, through their drugs, through their vaccines. Again, glyphosate in vaccines. 
There's no such thing as a safe vaccine. So the power you have has been given to you by that which you was w created us all, whatever you perceive or believe that to be. They would like us to believe that we don't have the power because they deceive us, much like Lucy and the football and Charlie Brown. Just vote this guy in or this gal in. This time it's going to be different. How many times do we see that and the football is removed right before you get to it? That's frustrating. By the way, the homeopathic remedy for frustration, if you're ever there, is Argentum Nitricum. Just so you know, it's a tip for you. If you get frustrated, don't take it out wrongly. But it's right to be frustrated about the things we've done that haven't gotten the results that we seek, that we feel are righteous, and, and it is righteous. The question is how? What kind of kung fu will we use that will actually achieve the goals that we're after? So take a moment, talk to the people here. Find out the little successes that will build and make big successes. Find out the big failures that would lead to the little successes and the big successes so we don't make the same mistakes in terms of thinking we can just yell and scream at them. That's not what we're doing here. Yes, we can yell and scream and there's nothing wrong with that. We gotta let it out. Let people know how we feel. But then what do we do after this, right? Do we go home and say, I can't wait till next year we get together again? Or do we find out what Justin's doing, what We Are Change is doing? What are we doing in new media? There are new media outlets out there. Those of you who are following natural news, a lot of information that's not being at all anywhere in the mainstream uh, media, print or TV. There was one news station here, Channel 9, I believe. We'll see if they even air the interview. A great little interview with Justin was done. That could get this thing out. But right now, you also are the media. In fact, the new media is you. It is me. It's everybody Facebook living and, and tweeting and Instagramming and communicating and sharing. Right now, while we have access to that level of information, engage in it every moment you are moved to do so. And then you won't be screaming alone, crying in the dark. You'll be enlightening those around you in a way that hopefully it moves your heart to do in a way that it will land. I'm so grateful to be a part of this, just a, a small part of this, and I will continue to do so two hours a day, six days a week on the Robert Scott Bell Show. And I just want to remind you as you're here to learn from each other. I'm here to learn from you as well. And I appreciate and, and you inspire me and Justin, you inspire me as well. And I want to thank you. And remember, ultimately the power to heal is yours. Don't ever forget that. Don't let anybody lie to you and tell you that it isn't. And you can help others to do the same if you're willing to do it for yourself. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it.